Oh my goodness, the last segment. This is segment six of unit one. Friends, we are near our very first test in this class. Aren't you excited? It's just gonna be so fun to show me what you know. Okay, moving along. Um, human impact, we're still in chapter 17, still section four in your book. Hopefully you have read it by now. And talking smog. Pollution plus fog equals smog. Some people say smoke plus fog equals smog. Um, we know pollution includes the NOx that we mentioned before in the Clean Air Act. The NOx. Um, smog is primarily caused by the NOx plus the hydrocarbons. Think of hydrocarbons, hydrogen and carbon. Um, fossil fuels are hydrocarbons. So that um, gasoline and diesel from automobiles is refined petroleum, so therefore it is a fossil fuel, blah, 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 blah. Olson, you're going crazy. Anyway, solar energy comes in and triggers a chemical reaction between the NOx and the hydrocarbon, and it produces ozone. We talked about this happening in the lower troposphere and how that is listed as one of the six air pollutants in the Clean Air Act. And so ozone is highly... Um, reactive with our lung tissue and creates problems. Bad news bears ozone is when it's in the troposphere. Um, temperature inversions, you guys, when you invert something, you flip it, okay? And so when we're talking temperature inversion, we're flipping the temperature layers, and that's going to make more sense when I show you the next slide, and there's a picture. Um, but temperature inversions can trap air pollution, and it's very dangerous. Get ready to draw this. I think that you need to include, whether you were getting a, a note template or whether you're writing this freehand, you need to draw this. But wait, let me explain what you need to draw so you draw it correctly. There are actually two boxes. Can you see it? This is one box. Bam. This is another box. Kapowie. Okay, the top box we're going to call normal. So what you're going to do is draw a box. You're going to draw these layers, okay, so that you can label them with their temperature. Um, I want you to draw a little squiggly line to represent land, and I want you to draw uh, some buildings, okay? Just do it. Stop complaining and just do it. So we're going to label the, the lowest layer warm <laughs> labeling it warm lots of energy by the way in warm air versus cool air right lots of movement with the air particles so they're moving they're going to just kind of diffuse up and through the second layer which you're going to label cool and third layer which you're going to label cooler so as basically what's normal is you get warm cool cooler and the these orange lines represent pollution lines from these factories so you got pollution going up and out, and away it goes. Woo, draw it like out. Don't draw it right here. Draw it like going out. Come on, people, just do it. And then down here, you're going to draw another box, okay? And you're going to label this box temperature inversion. This says thermal. It's saying the same thing, temperature inversion. And we're going to put our layers, our three layers of the atmosphere right here, and with a temperature inversion, you generally this happens in valleys. So typically, so on your drawing, you can actually draw like mountains, like going up and over, because this is very typical of a valley situation with this thermal um, temperature inversion. So we don't really see it in Michigan so much. But let me just explain what happens. So cold air has less energy. So when this pollution goes up and out of these factories, it's going to have less energy to it. So it's going to just hang, okay? It will hang here. And then you end up with this warm layer. So basically the warm air rose, down here is cold, okay? Replaced by cold, and the cold has less energy, so the, the pollution just hangs there. And then the top is cold, okay? So we have cold, warm, cold. With a, with a thermal inversion. So basically the warm flip-flop, the warm and the cool flip-flop. That's your inversion part of the word. It flipped. So anyhow, this is like 
being in a bottle with a top on it, all that pollution is concentrating here. So if you live in a valley, which no one does here in Michigan, but if you lived in a valley like out, say out in California, um, Arizona, anything like that, where there was a major city and major air pollution from cars and factories, if you live there, you would literally have to watch the news to find out if there was a thermal uh, temperature inversion taking place. And if there was, you would wear a mask outside, okay? So you wouldn't want to breathe in that air. There was a study that was done, a human study that was done um, on people on heart disease and lung cancer on people that lived in the valley versus people that did not and, and people that were having issues with temperature inversions versus the areas that were not. So they found that there was a higher incidence of heart condition and lung cancers that were taking place within the people in a valley in a city that were experiencing temperature inversions. So it's a very real situation. There's a concentration of pollution and it's bad news bears, friends. Here's some pictures. This is showing the inversion. This is showing no inversion. It's, it's got that smog, kind of fog mixed with smoke or pollution. And this is actually more of clouds, but same kind of idea with the inversion there. Boop. Okay. Ozone depletion is our last human issue that we're going to be talking about. Um, we have a reduction in the O3 in the stratosphere. Stratosphere we likey. Ozone is good there. It protects us from the UV radiation. Troposphere ozone, bad. That is a air pollutant. I'm going to show you this film here in a second, but ozone up there in the stratosphere is able to absorb the harmful UV radiation from the sun. UV, friends, is what causes um, suntans and sunburns and skin cancer. So for humans, that's a good thing that we have the ozone up there. Bad that it's being depleted. What is it being depleted by? Chlorofluorocarbons. Say it. Say it out loud. Chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs. And these used to be found in aerosol sprays, air conditioners, and solvents. No longer anymore. They have been banned um, through the Montreal Protocol. They got together. And these countries banded together and said, no more CFCs. We're seeing that they are destructive to the ozone, and we're going to ban them. You need to know this protocol for the test. Um, it was discovered that there was a thinning over Antarctica, and oftentimes you hear it listed as a hole. It's not a gaping hole, friends. It's just a thinning of that layer. And it happens to be over Antarctica based on how um, the wind patterns occur over our planet. The problem with the thinning, guys, is that the UV is getting through. So for humans, that means skin cancer, cataracts, which is like clouding over the, the um, um, oh, what's it called? The cornea, I think it is. And then, so you can't, so you're very limited on your vision. Premature skin aging, like you know, the wrinkling and the spots that you get. And then it weakens immune systems, not only of us and other organisms, but also plants. And plants actually have immune systems too. And so therefore it harms the crops. And we're done. So this is the last thing. I'm going to show you a little video clip that will take us out. Brace yourselves, friends. This is a good little clip from Teacher's Domain. i got to give credit where credit is due. And um, this is from... Mm, that segment adapted from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, and it describes how CFCs roll. So, here we go. Earth, a beautiful blue marble. Who would guess that serious changes are taking place in its atmosphere? These visible wavelengths are only a part of the electromagnetic spectrum. What you don't see are the radio, infrared, gamma, X-rays, and the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays, known as UV. So how does ozone play a part in this story? Ozone is a relatively unstable molecule found in the three layers of the Earth's atmosphere. In the stratosphere, ozone acts like a warrior's shield, protecting us from the sun's ultraviolet radiation. With depletion of ozone, we become more vulnerable to skin cancer and cataracts. Ozone is O3. In other words, the ozone molecule is made up of three oxygen atoms. Ordinary oxygen is O2. High energy ultraviolet radiation in the stratosphere.
breaks oxygen molecules apart, forming two separate oxygen atoms. These oxygen atoms are highly reactive, and they quickly join nearby oxygen molecules to form an O3 reaction. Stratospheric ozone protects us because it efficiently absorbs ultraviolet radiation. The absorbed UV energy splits ozone into an oxygen atom and an oxygen molecule. The three oxygen atoms quickly combine with a nearby oxygen molecule to reform ozone. We see that ozone forms, breaks up, and forms again in a repeating cycle. Because of this continuous repeating process, UV is absorbed by ozone and less reaches Earth. Because ozone is a highly reactive molecule, it interacts readily with nitrogen, hydrogen, bromine, and chlorine compounds. For example, when a chlorine atom collides with an ozone molecule, it steals an oxygen atom to form chlorine monoxide, and it leaves behind the chlorine oxygen molecule. When a free atom of oxygen collides with the chlorine monoxide, the two oxygen atoms bond to form an oxygen molecule. The chlorine atom is thus released and is free again, free to destroy another ozone molecule. This ozone loss sequence is called a catalytic cycle and is a natural process that has always existed in the stratosphere. As a result, one chlorine atom may destroy hundreds of thousands of ozone molecules before it forms one of other chlorine compounds and exits the stratosphere. The level of ozone in the stratosphere is balanced between the production of ozone due to the highly energetic UV radiation and the loss of ozone by capillary processes. This delicate balance has been upset by a five-fold increase of chlorine in the stratosphere since the early 1970s, causing the balance to shift to lower ozone levels. The chlorine increase has resulted from the chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, released in large amounts due to human industrial activity. Unlike ozone, CFCs do not break down easily. They are not water-soluble, like most chlorine-containing compounds, which may be washed out of the atmosphere by rain. In fact, CFCs eventually are transported intact into the stratosphere, where their concentrations have been measured by NASA instruments. In the upper stratosphere, the CFCs are broken apart by UV radiation, the first step in a chemical process that destroys ozone. The chlorine atoms are then freed from the CFCs, and they can catalytically destroy ozone. Ozone depletion is occurring because the CFCs and other manufactured compounds are causing additional ozone destruction. Originally, the ozone depletion process was based on theories. However, British scientists studying Antarctic ozone and NASA scientists gathering data from an ozone monitoring instrument in space were stunned in 1985 when they discovered that ozone had decreased dramatically over an area near the South Pole. We call this ozone decline and loss the ozone pole. Ozone depletion has occurred in both hemispheres of the world. Many countries contributed to the problem. Fortunately, most industrial nations have signed agreements to phase out many of the damaging chemicals. Meanwhile, the thinning of our protective ozone layer is a reality, and it adds to the basic danger of excessive exposure to the sun. Okay, so we are done now with Unit 1. You have all the notes. Good for you. Do a little cheer, maybe a little dance.